Hey, and welcome to the Mountain Cat Guitars podcast, where we discuss all things guitar related. My name is Doug Meyer, owner of Mountain Cat Guitars, and I've been buying and selling guitars professionally for over 25 years. From boutique guitar and amp builders, vintage guitar dealers and experts, guitar repairmen and luthiers, retailers, manufacturers, and of course, guitar players, we talk to the people who buy, sell, play, and of course, obsess over the things we love most, guitars. Hi, this is Doug Meyer, and welcome to Mountain Cat Guitars podcast number six. These podcasts are available on iTunes, and they're more fun to watch on YouTube. We do some really fun uh, videos that are really cool. We do a lot of demo videos and a lot of stuff we do just for fun because we have a great sense of humor. And we are very happy today to have my friend Josh Grove from Protocaster Guitars, straight from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, with us today. Hello, everyone. Hey, Josh. How are you and Josh came up today? We had a nor'easter last night, so the power is out in most of our little town here, but the power is working here in the lounge, and we're very happy about that, but it was a little nutty trying to get here, and we're happy to be here, and I'm really happy to have Josh on the po- on the podcast because we do a lot of stuff together, so we have a lot of ground to cover, and why don't we just get right down to it? Just jumped right in that so, thing. So, um, why don't we start? I met you initially, I believe, through Doug Cowher. Yes, yeah, Doug Cower has has been the the sort of center around which we've revolved for a little bit. But well, he was the first guy who contacted me about carrying boutique guitars. Really. Oh, that's right. I forgot. He was that. literally the first guy. Yeah. Yeah, and then everything kind of went out from there. Like, you know, Doug told me, "Oh, if you like my stuff, call Mike Potvin." And then, and, you know, like and me and Doug started doing stuff for me. Yeah. Like he was always telling me like, "Oh, there's this guy in Brooklyn." Yeah, it, and it, he's he's just got that way about him. That that sort of Yeah. Uh, connectivity kind of aspect. Yeah, to and then we were all sort of learning. So, like, I had just started in boutique guitars the day he called me. You know, like, you know, like that. Was, he was the first guy I carried. Sent me some guitars. They were cool. And then I started. But he was always saying, "Oh, there's this guy in Brooklyn. Like, if I wish he lived in California because he shoots. You know, <laughs> he still says that. He's like, if he was in California, he'd be working for me. You know, like. But you know, so so I remember going to your place. I think the first time with Night Bob. Mm. Oh, that's right. I think I was on one of my, like, guitar safaris. We would go into the city and hook up with as many cool guitar guys as I'm we sure could. I'm sure you had to be terrified coming over to my house for the first time. No, like, wait a minute. Am I going to walk out of here? Well, I've been in some weird fucking places, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some weird shit. But, um, but no, we were really interested. We, we'd, your website was up, so you could see the stuff. Right, okay. You yeah. know, it was the website that was up until about last year that never changed ever. <laughs> yes, but it had yes, nice exactly. looking work on totally it. So static. had some really great looking white cartelli. So I was really interested. I'd spoke to you. So I knew, you know, I didn't think I was meeting up with some weirdo, but you know, like in New York it's always a thing. You'd walk into some sure. apartment. You're never sure if you're walking back out. Yeah? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> now I don't remember. Did we have uh, much initial contact before we actually met in person? I don't think so. Or was I think it we just spoke that and we I was gonna... like I come to New York, you know, and I was with Night Bob and He'd seen the stuff, and he's like, I wouldn't mind seeing that stuff. Yeah. You know, and then we just, I think I drove over there. We, we were in the city. I was like, let's just drive over to Williamsburg and right. check it out. Because the the, the first meeting uh, was at the Brooklyn Guitar Show, which I miss that show. I really I, it do. It comes up on every podcast. I know. It's funny. Everyone was, yeah, everyone, I hope Lisa's watching this. Like, Lisa, redo yeah, your please, show. Please do it you again. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do a Kickstarter for that show or something. I know. Every, it comes up on every podcast because Jeff from Champ and I really hung out with it. That at the amp show, really, also, but at the Brooklyn Guitar Show, I would see him. Yeah. And Jamie was always, you know, like, everyone went to that. It, it was, was super fun. I, I mean... I missed that. That was fun. The the lead-up to that show, for me, was always uh, yeah, didn't you stay, stay up, up all, all night. night. Yeah, I was I trying think... to finish Banshees. Like, <laughs> yes. you literally I... showed up in a suit and tie, <laughs> yes. and you'd bake bread or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it was about as Brooklyn a thing as I yeah, could Yeah, like, uh... you were the only one that showed up dressed for success. <laughs> like, Cobra showed up on ass. Yeah, right. And... But but it would always be the case that uh, I think for the six times that they had it or, wh- or whatever yeah, that's it was, what I think it was that uh, I I did not sleep the night before. Yeah, that every I was time. working on uh, yeah, we left six ourselves guitars. plenty of time for these deadlines. <laughs> right. The night before four in the morning, you're like, yes. yeah, I'm starting to wire them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just awful, just yeah. terrible. Yeah, we, we're better than that now. Yeah, I and think. then I would just get stone drunk. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then we start drinking the second we got there. <laughs> right. Yes. And Daniel, who's right there. <laughs> who would always help me back then? Well, he got involved with Cobra, and that's a whole other story. And 
that's not too helpful. But, but that's how we met the first time. Uh, was Is it me that's bringing where we met? a guitar? Yes, that, that's where we met in person. That was before uh, I went to your place in Noisburg? It, it was, because you had visited. Oh, afterwards. so then I already knew you, right. Well, I mean, knew. Like, right. we had shaken hands and spent some oh, time. Oh, see, at, I, didn't, uh, I thought the, the first time uh, we met was when we went down to your basement, but it's always hard to remember mm, the, the mm. chronology of these things. But, so yeah, I mean, I Bob went to your place and we were like, wow, these guitars are dope and all this. And I forget what, how we started, probably Banshees or something, but I wanted a protocast with the second I saw one. I was like, oh, I want some of these. You know, <laughs> yes, like, yeah. and then it got into like, well, let's finish other stuff in, in these finishes and the whole thing. But you were a very primitive version of what Protocaster now is. Oh, and, so much more primitive. And so was I even. You know, like I was maybe a little further, maybe I was two years into Mountain Cat. Yeah, yeah. A little further, but long. not much, because yeah. I just, we hadn't done any of this stuff. And a large part of what Mountain Cat now is, is what I do with Protocasters. And I guess we could explain the relationship because I don't know if people really always understand I, that. I think you're right. I, I and, don't think that's as clear right. so as, like the, as it could the be. The deal is, you know, because Josh has to do all this work, he can't be on the phone all day talking about doing this work. And these are long conversations. If someone wants to do a guitar like this, with weather checking and pitting and new parts and all this, they're long conversations and it usually changes over the course of the job. So I have the time to talk to the folks and get them exactly what they want. But if you were on the phone that time, the guitar would never get done. <laughs> right, five years later. Right, because sometimes the conversations are an hour and a half, two hours long, bullshitting about Peter Green and all this stuff, yeah. and the, the work would never get done. So, like, I don't know that much technically. Like, a lot of times they have to speak to you because I don't understand what sure, you're talking sure. about. I don't really understand this. Is done. I know enough you tell me shit, but I don't really know some of the technical aspects because I don't shoot guitars, but you do. So, basically, I am the exclusive rep of Mountain of Protocaster makeovers and Protocasters and all Protocaster refinishing and restoration work, which we still do a lot of also. Yeah. So it's kind of like all under, and there are Protocasters, you know, this is a Protocaster. So there right. are guitars and there's plans for Protocaster models down the road. So we have a lot of stuff, but basically because I can be on the phone all day, you can work. Y yes. And yeah. we try to hit our deadlines. We don't want to hold guitars for a very long time. So we try to do a makeover. If it's not too big, try to get back to the person within six or eight weeks. Right. Which I think is quicker than most other places that do it. By, by probably a factor of six. I mean, or, yeah, some uh, guys take a really long time. Yeah. I, th I think mostly they just take your guitar and it sits there. Sure, you know, which, yeah, yeah. Which, the actual amount of time they're working on a thing is probably it's not It's probably that roughly long. the same. But, yeah, like, you yeah. know, we don't... And we still are just getting to the point now where we're maxing out for the first time, seriously, where we'll have to have people, we've already started, so, you know, don't send your guitar for two or three weeks. Right. You know, eventually there'll probably be a thing where, like, well, let me just take your all your stuff, I'll give you a number, and I'll let you know when it's coming closer, because I don't want late guitars, and I don't want to upset people, so that's where we're getting to now, because now Protocaster, you know, like... We always dreamed of the day when there would be too many jobs. <laughs> right. and now there's too many jobs. You know, like, yeah. It's only because you do work by yourself. You know, there isn't a team at Protocaster yet. <laughs> right. You know, like maybe it, there. It is literally the Geppetto in a workshop. Right. Story. You know, which is why they come out this way. I've worked with a lot of builders who then try to get to two or three guys, and then the work doesn't come out the same way, or it takes you so long to teach somebody to do something like that that you could have did it yourself. Yeah. And moved on. So now it's slowing you down, and unless you're going to keep this person long term. Right. It's really it just, just fucking you up. Yeah. That happens in my place. I had a guy working for me. Like, you know, you, he would be useless for months because <laughs> he doesn't know what these things are. You know, you can't yes. talk to a customer. Yeah. You know, I just said, just sit on the couch and listen for a month. Yeah. And you'll start picking up what what's what and how I say things. And eventually you'll know the answers. You know, you would hear it. But Some of that you can't teach, though. I mean, in your right. case, uh, well, you're I've just such an alone. affable, genial guy. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, I mean, you're tremendously easy to talk to. Well, thank you. Uh, and I think that absolutely comes across for people who come by your shop. Uh, and I think that's been a, a wonderful asset uh, for moving gear. Well, I think a lot of people forget at a certain point you're dealing with a person who's doing something for really enjoyment. You know, if, if someone's going to say, I want to have a Peter Green guitar made by Protocaster, you know, they don't get to do it all the time. They've thought about it a lot. It costs money. You know, they want to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, that's why, like, I send pictures way before they ask them for them. Yeah. Because, you know, I, it sucks when you have to, can I have pictures? And the guy goes, no. You know, like, <laughs> we'll send you one shitty picture. You know, like, we send cr crazy answer pictures because you will send them to me. Right. You know, I can't send them unless you send them to me first. But everything <laughs> you do, you say, oh, I just did that. The pictures are in your email. You know, which is great. So, you know, people are excited. They come home from work after a long day and they're like, whoa, shit, look at my guitar. That's fucking dope. I'm psyched. I, you know, I, that's what this job is about. And a lot of people don't realize that. It's not just about getting the money at the end. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. that's I mean, there, there, there a byproduct are relationships of relationships that are being built. But yeah, it's really more important to that person enjoys themselves. And almost every person we've done a makeover for has done another one. Yes. Well, one person has done how many now? Uh, so <laughs> six, maybe for for one. Fe- Actually, no, no. Uh, maybe he's way past about six. ten. I yeah. think, for, for another fellow. Yeah. yeah, and then um, one of them has done several, and the fellow who we're doing one for now is already talking about his next one. Yes, because you know, so, it's fun. I mean, if I was, I had a makeover made by Dave Johnson. You know, like before we were us, and yeah. I worked at you know in the city. I had Dave Johnson do some work because the work was incredible. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted one. You know, so. You know, it's a no-brainer. I understand why people want them because I want them. If I didn't know you and I wasn't me, I'd be having these things done by somebody. <laughs> right, you yeah, know, because exactly. I like old guitars. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I think these finishes should be stripped and they should be real nitro. You know, yeah. so and that's our thing. And then we'll get into that too with the difference between the thing. But let's pivot for one second because we usually start this way and talk about where you come from and how you mm. came to be in New York. I know a bit of it, but sure. with each guest too, even someone like Night Pablo, I've known for a long time. I didn't really, you know, like. Because you don't talk about your past every day with sure. people. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, right. There's kind of the common. Right. So I know where you, you come up, from. Yeah. And I spoke to your dad recently, who's super awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's a character. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's cool. Uh, <laughs> I can so, see where you came from. Right. right yeah. yeah. It did, the the he was super, apple doesn't fall far from. Yeah, the tree. he was super, way cool. So uh, I was born in Richmond, Virginia, uh, and lived most of my life there. Uh, it's uh, for for those who haven't been. It's a medium-sized town that has some aspects of small town living where, you know, depending on what kind of scene you're in, you're just going to run into those same people everywhere. And and that can have its pros and cons. It can be nice and uh, comforting to, you know, have so many people that you know and be familiar with and grow up with. Uh, and uh, but it can also be claustrophobic in the sense that you can't get right. away right. Uh, from those people. Uh, I moved to New Jersey for a short time in my mid twenties, uh, and with the idea that I'd be moving to New York. Uh, yeah. The the uh, girl that I was dating at the time was in New Jersey. I moved there again, knowing that eventually we would uh, you know move on from there, uh, and then moved to uh, New York about ten years ago. Uh, and it was right at that time that I, up until that point, had been uh, working in kitchens, cooking, and right. waiting tables, and, you know, just kind of the usual odd uh, job yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I thought, I don't want to live out the stereotype of being a waiter in New York, uh, right. and had enough money set aside that I thought, well, I've been making guitar stuff for myself for a little while. Uh, let me see if I can do this professionally. Uh, And so made a couple of guitars uh, and uh, ended up selling them relatively quickly and thought, okay, maybe there's something here. Uh, And it was from those two guitars that I've just been doing this now exclusively for uh, for a 10-year period of time. That's pretty amazing because I always think people who would watch the podcast, I always tell people this, like, yeah, there could be some young guy who looks at people like us and go, wow, those people make a living messing with guitars. Like, right. I would like that to possible? do that. Like, yeah, when I was a kid, I'd be like, that's what I wanted to do. You know, like, but there wasn't information. Like, how did, like, you would re- see some guy on television, you'd be like, how do you become that guy? Yeah. You know, like, and you knew there was, you know, people in the Rolling Stones, and you know how that happened. But there was all these other people who made their living messing with guitars. You yeah. Know? So, like, I always wanted a life that involved guitars in some way. If I couldn't, my band couldn't, you know, be a full-time thing, then... That would I would always play, but I had to find some other way to make yeah, money. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I w- wasn't interested in regular jobs because they were demanded that you show up to them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, do so a bunch of shit I was not interested in doing. It, in my know. case, it was a just a slow migration of uh, increasing skills, increasing interest as those skills increased. Uh, you know, going from. Uh, say, with a Stratocaster, to adjusting the saddles on the bridge right. and feeling more comfortable about, okay, well, it didn't explode after I did that. Right. So. And, and actually, I improved it by making the little change I, I made to, to growing confidence about, uh, you know, the, the kinds of things that I could take on task-wise until uh, eventually I thought, uh, well, I, I want a specific guitar, but it doesn't actually exist. So That's what a lot of people do, you know, because now we've, this is the sixth podcast that so we've been you know, and that seems, I'm sure once you've done 30 or 40 of them, you speak to a lot of builders, you're going to start seeing common threads and things. Yeah, I'm, I'm but, sure. But, you know, that yeah. was certainly Alex's thing, you know, like, was oh, that right? class, or when he was just saying, the guitars just didn't work properly, and he would bring them to the <laughs> shop, and they just, no one was making them really work right. Yeah. And he thought, like, maybe I could learn that. 
you know, maybe, and he did something. He's like, wait, I improved it. That's interesting. I, I, like, I didn't realize that there was that kind of self well, a lot of self-guided guys because you know the repair shops were so bad years ago. Yeah. Like, generally, they didn't fix the problem you brought it in for. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, that comes right. up. But you could charge like, though. Yeah, the guitar would stay <laughs> in tune, so you'd bring it to the guitar shop, and they would sell you Grovers or some shit, and your guitar would still go out of tune. It would have Grovers, you know, like <laughs> right. you know, I had these great guitars, and they just wouldn't stay in tune. I'd go do a gig. I only had two guitars. One of them won't stay in tune for a whole song, so you got to sell it. Yeah. Because I, you know, I was a working musician, so like. Couldn't have guitars that couldn't get through two songs. I only had a couple of guitars, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, it, that was the biggest problem back then was getting things to stay in tune. Now I now have to fix a lot of them even myself because it's mostly the nut. You know, like, we used to tune and hear ping, 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 ping. <laughs> and I thought that was groovy. You know, and that's the reason your guitar <laughs> won't stay in tune. Like, yeah. would you get a pencil and do this? You're like, wow, fuck. Yeah. Oh. But, you know, like, like refret. So I didn't even know what that meant. I remember a friend of mine telling me, like, I'm getting my guitar refretted. And I was like, the fuck does that mean? <laughs> right. You're gonna pull these things out of there? <laughs> That's impossible. Why the fuck would you do that? Like, <laughs> Can't I didn't even done. know they wore out. Yeah. You know, like, you know, and I was old already. It wasn't like I was 12. <laughs> you know, like, but you never heard that term. Like, people didn't, you know, I was in a small town, not a big, you know, not a small town, small town, but I wasn't in a city where I've heard of someone refretting a guitar. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever read that in a guitar magazine. You know, like, I didn't even know that went on. My friend who did it had his guitar ruined. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, he was a great guitar player. Oh. He had a black Les Paul custom. We all loved it. Oh, no, and he it was a Les Paul custom? And had it refreshed. Oh. And, and then the next time I saw him, it was I was like, where's your guitar? It's like, I sold it. Oh. He's like, oh. yeah, I got it refreshed. And it just was horrible. I couldn't even that's, play it. That's hard. Because there were a lot of guys who really didn't know what they were doing. You yeah. Know, like, you know, like he wasn't in New York City. I'm sure there were good guys even back uh. then. You know, like, but a lot of that kind of shit went on. So, like, you know. It is funny how the... The knowledge base has increased so much over the past. Yeah, you know, that's 10, and that comes up in every years. podcast too. Like there was like nothing. He was, we were talking about Night Bob. I was like, yeah, and we had a book, and he's like, you guys had a book even. <laughs> like, and then, you know, like book? What's a book? Yeah, like you had a book about guitars. You know, like and we you would just go to guitar Ooh, shops. Mr. Fancy Pants. Yeah, it was all like fuck. It was all secondhand knowledge. You know, yeah. all stuff you heard or somebody on the block told you. You know, like Jerry Garcia does this to his guitar. So like, you know, you and then it turns out he doesn't. <laughs> right. But you did it to yours now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, right. Jerry Garcia. Oh, no, I didn't say Jerry thing. Garcia. Why I said uh, Fred Garcia, the guy over there. You're like, <laughs> right. Wait, no, but I did this now. You know, like no, so. no, my cousin Jerry Garcia. Yeah, and he sucks, and he ruined his guitar. <laughs> right. uh, you must oh, have heard the end of the story. I, I forgot yeah. to tell you that part. Oh, yeah, no, no. He, yeah he, he ruined that guitar, and he's uh, you know, he's a fucking heroin <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's in jail. Yeah, he's definitely in yeah, jail. That's a psycho. You don't want to do anything he does. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so, um. All right, so you started building some guitars. I met you probably like two years after that. You yeah, know, I think like that's if you've right. If you've been doing it for 10 years, I've, and we've been working together, I've had Matt and Yeah, it's like, like seven and Between eight change. and nine, it's about seven years. Yeah. So, and we've done a lot of stuff we've in that time. We've done a ton of stuff. Because they were, you know, at that time, they were just, you know, you were do, doing some white cartelis. Yeah, basically. You know, and yeah. there was a, a Strata or something. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm so indebted to you in, in so many ways, but one of them is in the way in which you've increased the range of things that I can do. Uh, that you have uh, suggested, oh, uh, why don't you learn how to do this thing? Or, uh, hey, I got this job. Do you know how to do it? Yeah, you're like, uh, <laughs> uh, I can figure it out. Well, what's funny is the very first Les Paul I ever gave you to refinish, I didn't know it was the first Les Paul you were. And it's here. And it's unbelievable. That's it's right. It's literally yeah. the first Les Paul you ever finished. And it's the best Les Paul finish on any guitar of all time. <laughs> if for some reason, the color is great. We were going for a Billy Gibbons thing. Yeah. But this one weather checked in a way that nothing ever weather checked Here. since. Can you guys like look, get this? Our camera guy, Daniel. <laughs> but this one is so crazy weather checked and the color is so killing. And this is literally the first Les Paul you <laughs> yeah, ever shot. Number one. I mean, you know, like, I mean, can you get in, see all that stuff? Like, it, it, nothing has ever weather checked like this since. And we could go into how you weather check. You know, this is not razor checking. Right, yeah. This is w- real weather checking. But this one, and when you handed it back to me, the first I was like, holy <laughs> fuck! And you're like, and then you, I think you said, oh, you know, this is the first Les Paul I ever shot. I was like, <laughs> right. are you, I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, so and ever, they've sucked ever since. It's, yeah, it's terrible. Can't. It's been no, all down. Really, this was the first one. So you knew how to shoot a finish already, and you knew how to match a color because I think I gave you a picture. Mm. You know, so mm. but this when you handed it back to me, I was like, oh my god. He's like, you know, like that's as good as I've seen anybody do a Les Paul finish. And <laughs> well, since then, they've you. even they've 
come a long way. This was probably six years ago. I think that's right. Yeah. And how many Les Pauls have we done since then? We have done many a Les Paul. Oh, yeah, I don't know. A plethora probably, of Les Pauls. I mean, there's enough just sitting around here. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, how many do are we doing currently? Yeah, it's pretty in, amazing. I right? mean, in the shop, I think there must be ten or twelve, fifteen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I I lose count of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which we shouldn't uh, do. We, we <laughs> right. do not lose count. I mean, uh, we do not lose all, your guitar. It we, is all <laughs> thoroughly documented. Yeah, yeah we do, we know what we're doing. We don't lose, lose count. Things. Is a figure is a speech here. Means <laughs> not what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, they are taping this. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, That's what these people are on here. <laughs> so, I mean, again, just to to hit on this point because I I think it's an important one. Uh, it is through you that the the skill set that I, I've developed over the over the years has broadened enormously. Well, it really it was just a, one of those perfect things. Yeah. Because I met you, I was doing stuff, I just hooked up with Doug Cower, and then we decided to have the Banshee shot in Nitro so you could age them. Right. And then it moved on from there to other things, you know, that, and then, because I like relic guitars, I'm a vintage guitar guy, you know, I, and I was a vintage guitar dealer, I still am, but now I do boutique guitars too, but I still like vintage, even when I do a boutique guitar, it's still a vintage style guitar. Yes, so, yeah. And I don't like brand new shiny guitars, because I always feel like I'm going to fuck them up. I, so. I think you raise a really, really good point, uh, one to, to dwell on for a bit, that there's such an anxiety that goes along with oh, a super that. shiny guitar. Some people love to have a perfect guitar and they don't want a single ding. Ugh. And they, they, you know, they. But but that's the thing. They don't want a single ding. The world is filled with ding right. possibilities. Right. I remember when I was a kid and I got my first real Strat and it got its first ding and I was really heartbroken. I wanted to have it refinished. Yeah, you're crestfallen. Yeah, you know, like now it's like you know, like I hate having a brand new finished guitar in my yeah. shop because I know someone's gonna pick it up. And it's going to get hit against the next guitar and have that little nope, and then I got to mark it down five hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, now it's not a new guitar. Right? Yeah, try to buff it out, and that's a pain in the ass. So yeah, like, I, I mean, but, I, I think there is a common understanding in in some uh, circles that relic means something that's really overblown, really tacky. What well, did uh, an artificial? You know, like because uh, really the thing that we try to stress when you're talking about a makeover is, you know, this makes the guitar sound better. When you strip off that crap that was on one of these beforehand, it's not the right lacquer for a guitar. Sure. It's the right lacquer for a giant company <laughs> to shoot hundreds of thousands of these things without a human sense. being involved. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that's not, ha you know, like, well, I understand why they have to do it. They would need tens of thousands of views. <laughs> right. Seriously, to make yeah. enough guitars look like this and to fill the shop. So it, it, it can't exactly. be done. It's, it's, they right, need it's to shoot something that a machine could come and another machine can buff it and it drives within a few days and it's out in the shop. Right. You know, that's, or, or even faster. Which is fine. So that's, you know, like, I understand that they do that, but that does not sound, that stuff does not sound good. Well, on it top makes the of guitar that, sound shitty. I, I would <laughs> add to that that there's another practical layer to having a guitar like this. I mean, so we mentioned... Uh, the the sort of anxiety that surrounds the new thing. Oh, I don't want to ding it. Uh, having a guitar that's already got, you know, f whether it's a really heavily aged guitar. Right, or like this is one of the most heavily guitar. aged. We don't do yeah. them like this generally. This yeah. is a Peter Green guitar. So we copied Peter Green's. This was actually the, we've done many Peter Green's now. Yeah. This was the test Peter Green um, to see what it would come out like. I just happened to have this guitar around. And we're like, oh, you know, just shoot a Peter Green finish on this because someone had already ordered one. Right. And we we're like, let's just make sure it's going to look cool <laughs> right. before let's... we go rip his guitar apart. You know, that, <laughs> right. we, that it'll look the way we wanted it to. So, like, this one doesn't quite have a Peter Green top. Yeah. Because it wasn't, you know, when we'll do a Peter Green, we look for ones that have, you know, you know, more of the top. And you do a Peter Green you know, that way. Right, but, but then, then say the Protocaster that you have over here is a more lightly aged guitar. Right, this isn't like normally what we do. It's weather uh, checked the way sinking. a guitar would be weather checked. You, you yellow out the parts. Right. And this, but there isn't like fake armware there where right. your, your arm yes. would never encounter the guitar. Yeah, tasteful and realism. Giant sanding. That's the way they were in the beginning and they were cool. And some people like can take it to that level now and still make it look cool. Like Cobra can just do crazy stuff to a guitar and it looks... <laughs> yeah. Really cool. Yeah. But if I did that, it would look fucking stupid. Sure. You know, like sure. he just has this artistic thing where he's taken aging to this slightly abstract place. That's a really good way to put it. You know, like, yeah. but then some people just do it bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Cobra that's also, was always good yeah. at it. When he was a kid, he was obsessed with like the way things aged. He would stare at it, you yeah. know, like he wanted to reproduce it. And now he's gone to get this other place. But our thing and your thing really is to make realistic looking guitars. 
out of you know guitars that aren't that realistic looking. So when we get a Les Paul, you know their headstock usually is not right. Correct. Their top carve is not correct. Yeah. You do a lot of stuff. You know their parts are not the right color. You know like. They're the tail pieces, and you know, I don't mean to shit on Gibson, but you know, <laughs> I guess that's what I'm doing. We're being sued, I guess. But, um, right. but it's just a fact of the matter. You know, it's like if you know, now guys really know, you know, there's forums and guys study this shit, and right. some of the information's right, and some of it's complete nonsense. But you know, but <laughs> when you true. have the wrong color rings, guys know, sure, you know, and yeah. some guys really know, you know, and that's why there's these like really, you know, there's a lot of these amazing companies that reproduce things that are just unbelievable. But you know, I try not to deal with the people who are just completely insane because you can never satisfy certain things. That's but you know, right. these shouldn't be that fleshy, weird color. You know, like, yeah, that's just yeah, bizarre. Yeah. You know, like, you know, and like, you know, like, you know what the right tailpiece looks like. And there's so many of these out there, you know, does it really look exactly like a 59 burst? No two 59 bursts really look the same. So, it, that, you know. That's a good point. You know, so there's, there's, there's if something they did, it would be one thing. That's around right. that stuff. You know, if they all looked exactly the same, you know, the, the top carb isn't the same on every single burst because, from what I gather, those blades wore down. Right. Because you know, yeah. they're supposedly ones with no carb at all. Yeah. They're completely yeah, flat I mean, tops. Machines, you know, yeah, machines they were machines and they were time. people. And it was yeah. Friday afternoon, the guy's like, whatever, this guitar's good. <laughs> right. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's go to the yeah, bar. It's fine. <laughs> you know, 50 years from now, no one's going to look at this and wonder what it is. It is you know? funny how that, that has changed over time. But but just to, to uh, put a period on this point, uh, I, I think, among other things, there's a really interesting kind of practicality uh, to the sort of aging that we do for guitars. And, and part of it is this, that uh, if I had the best sounding, best playing, uh, best feeling guitar ever, but it was neon pink and covered in Hello Kitty stickers, I'm not going to play right. it. Uh, if I'm drawn to some like luscious, beautiful finish, right. uh, these sinuous uh, curves on right. a thing, uh, I, I'm, I'm drawn to playing them. No doubt. Uh, I remember the first time I saw like a Rosington guitar, which was the first like properly aged Les Paul I ever saw. I walked into 30th Street and I saw it on the wall and I was just like, I gasped. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> What? I, at first, I don't thought it was a burst because it had right. aging that looked real. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, those Rosingtons were done by Tom Murphy, and he really did them with this old lacquer, supposedly. Mm. You know, I still have that guitar, but I remember vividly walking into the guitar shop. Wasn't I didn't work there yet. I worked there later, but I was like, oh my god! I was like, you guys got a real <laughs> burst? And like, no, it's a Gary Rosington. I'm like. The Skinner guy? What, <laughs> right. what does that have to do with... <laughs> right, I don't, guitar? Like, I don't get it. It's a signature series thing. That's a new guitar. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. And they took it down. And I was like, I got to have it. <laughs> right. And I was like, I'll be right back. I ran home. I got a jazz bass. I had... You know, you yeah, never yeah. any yeah. money. The but clouds I always parted. Had, yeah, I always had stuff. And the owner was cool. And down. I was like, hey, I'd like to do a trade. I have some really great shit. He's like, oh, go run home and get some shit. Yeah. You know, it's how it always worked. You know, I had like an old jazz bass. Sure, sure. But I don't need an old jazz bass for a guitar player. <laughs> but I had one. So like that was, you know, I had some shit to trade. And I got that guitar. And it was the first one I saw that was really aged nicely. Like, and I look at it now. And I'm like, I've seen that guitar. That's a nicely nice done guitar. There, yeah. yeah, really well done. It does not like now all our guitars are great and those suck. That's I saw it recently. I was like, that's really nice. That looks yeah. like ours. Yeah. You know, like, but supposedly someone told me they asked him and he said that he had all this really old lacquer that he used on the rosin. Oh, is that I, right? Because I have a couple signature series. Because I have a Dwayne Allman and I have a Michael Bloomfield too. I've, I've seen it's those. It's not those the are same also lacquer. Nice. The, the Rosingtons did do something a little different. Mm. You know, those are I'm sure are real nitro, and he was working at Gibson at the time, so he can get them. Best of everything, if he mm. wants, you know, like so. I'm sure he was using cool lacquer. Yeah, that's you know, probably and, right. And I th think basically that you know, like those signature series guitars were basically like what we do. You know, just you know, a really good guy doing the guitars one at a time. Yeah. And taking his time instead of these gigantic factory-made guitars r rolling off a thing, you know, and then you know, they usually... right. You've you've got the time to do it. Right. I mean, from a, a production standpoint, and that's what bursts it, it, I mean, it's crazy it, that the uh, that they're able to even put as much time as that. Right. Um, and that's but, why but, you get them they're always all fucked up. Right. But you know, like but you know, like in the fifties, you know, there were guys who built bursts. There were guys who built the L fives, you know, that was their job. A yeah. guy built the guitar. You know, maybe one guy built this and then the other guy did the mm. neck and but you know, they were hand they were hand making guitars and that's why they came out good and that's why they sound good. The really good wood was available and there's a bunch of shit that we could argue about why sure, sure, you know, sure. magic dust and all that <laughs> shit. You know, <laughs> right, it yeah. comes up on every podcast too, like why do PAF sound the way they do? Yeah. It has something yeah. to do with Sasquatch. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, really, at the end of the day, it almost always comes down to Sasquatch. Yeah, most uh, things do. Yeah. You know, because most, <laughs> me and Jamie decided that one day, PAFs are Sasquatch. <laughs> right. They're the same fucking thing. Yeah. Some people have seen them. Some people think they've seen them. <laughs> right. Some people have think they've talked to them. Yeah, exactly. You know, 
exactly. like they're, you know, and no one, you know, and it's this mysterious thing, and like, you know, a lot of people think our PAFs <laughs> are not PAFs, and all, every set of fucking PAFs is different. Sure. You know, so it's like, you know, so the, so when you have those conversations, they're weighty, and you, there's no answers because I've been having the same conversation for 25 years. You know, like. And that's what's interesting about it, you know, like, is that, you know, why did, you know, and not all bursts sound good, you know. Sure, so like, absolutely. So I mean, it, held up as the holy grail of everything, but they don't, they weren't all produced that well. I mean, they, they well. become objects that people fetishize and impute all sorts like of qualities. Exactly. That, you know, they, like they, Sasquatch they, was probably either a guy in a fuzzy bear suit <laughs> or a fucking bear, you know, like, but it turns into this thing, you know, like the Loch Ness yes. Monster, you yeah. know, that was probably a really big alligator, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> or I could be or wrong, and Sasquatch is fucking real, yeah. and they're watching this going like, this guy's a total dickhead. <laughs> right. Like, what an ass. We, yeah. have this guy so we, we just cool. lost the Sasquatch yeah. audience. I'm not watching comment. this podcast <laughs> yeah. anymore. Unsubscribe. Yeah, once they mention my name in their side, fucking podcast. <laughs> fucking, You'll be yeah. hearing from Mike my voice. monster, I'm calling him next. He's going to be so pissed. <laughs> right. These fucking assholes. He'll never believe what <laughs> yeah. this dickhead yeah. said. These guys are doing it again. They think we're not real. They're making fun of us. Uh. Fuck them. But... Mm. Well, that actually uh, brings up the opportunity to check ab uh, talk about checking. Right. Uh, so that's a big thing. So I try to explain this to people. And now we're having all kinds of strange occurrences with checking because it's all about checking. Like when we used to try to make guitars check at Chelsea Guitars when we were young, and I'm sure Daniel would know, what we would do is get that, because most of them weren't nitro anyway. Right. You know, we would go get that stuff at, at the radio can shack. air, like yeah, the, would, the keyboard yeah. air. Like thing. if you put it on your skin, it would your skin would <laughs> yes, just fall yeah. off. And we'd shoot Don't that on, and then we'd hit it with a hair dryer. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. and you never knew what would happen. Yeah, you yeah. Know, sometimes it would just went blah. Yeah. You know, you're like, uh, something's out to be refinished. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's like stupid. I uh, <laughs> yeah. just ruined this. This is not good. <laughs> well, the first time we tried to raise her, because everyone's like, oh, you know, Tom Murphy oh, raised her guys? checks. My I friend Roger, all. sorry, Roger, I'm telling this story. Oh. But we were at Chelsea Guitars, and he took a razor blade to his last. Paul, and he didn't do it right. It was, it was probably, <laughs> what is you just imagine to what happened in his mind. It, but it, as soon as that blade touched the guitar, it's like, what am I doing? Yeah, he just made one line and it looked so stupid. We're like, make more around it. That'll make it look better. We're like, no, it's making it worse. Uh, make something go that way. Oh, oh now man. it's even worse than that. Yeah. It's like, uh, have this refinished. Yeah, this that's is, that's a it car just looks crash so in slow motion. Dumb. Oh, but man. like there was a, even a video I suppose I think I remember of like Tom video Tom Murphy showing you how to do it. Oh, this was fairly recently then. Like no, within, no, this within, is a Chelsea uh, like 10, 15, No, even longer ago, fifteen years ago. Okay, okay. all right. You know, like but you know, like oh. <laughs> it just didn't work the way we thought it was going to work. But Protocaster guitars, by and large, are not. Yeah. Razor no, check. Ninety nine point nine percent. Unless they're not nitro. Yeah. If you exactly. shoot the guitar, they're they're don't natural know, checking. Natural checking. Yeah. If it's someone else's lacquer and they don't want you to strip it, and you know, you razor checked one of my guitars, it came out great. I've I've done it before, and oh my god, it yeah, is so tedious. Right. Uh, I mean, it looks good. We don't have that guitar, but you no. you did a banshee for me that Doug had shot because Doug doesn't shoot nitro, and you razor checked it and it looked really nice. Yeah. But there's something slightly different about it. But it there is from. No one else would notice that, except if you're a crazy weather checking guy who yeah, looks at the show. Yeah, I mean, that. there's there's a, a difference in texture. Right. Uh, there's a difference. And it's not like under the lacquer. It seems more over the lacquer, and that's the way those yeah, those bit, Murphy yeah. things, like even my Rosington, you know, like you can see now that you know it's razor checking, you could see it. Right. You know, but it still looks amazing, but because he did such a nice job. But yeah, it his, doesn't look he, like this. He where he really does a nice job with that. Stuff. Well, some of them. I, I don't know, know how he has some of them. Totally I think, crazy doing it. I don't even know how much he even still does it. Like those, he supposedly he built the guitars and did it, and then some were just Murphy aged. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he, most he of them were just some Murphy. Of those aged. And then... Yeah, supposedly he had the, like a Rosington. He made the guitar and finished it. Oh, interesting. Or at least okay. finished it. A lot of those that they were calling Murphy aged, if I understand this correctly, like he didn't shoot it. They just handed him guitars. Uh, okay, they just said right. they, they put a couple of razor right. checks. Here, Good. Tom. Because we got thing. so many of those when I was at 30th Street. Like just so I, we were dealing so many Les Pauls. We got so many of those Murphy aged guitars, and some of them just had like a couple little razor things and off it went. You know, <laughs> can like, you blame him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Well, I'm getting paid whatever. Who gives a fuck? Right. Uh, you know, I don't I'm, know. His I'm salary. Right. You know, but the, it didn't look like the Rosingtons where he was like trying to reproduce every yeah. single thing. Yeah. Oh, you know, and, and he did, and he did a beautiful oh. job. You know, later on you say, oh, a Murphy age guitar. You'd open it up and be like, where's the aging? Oh, that li those couple little lines. It was just very minimal. Uh, you know, so I, like. I mean, just to give people an idea, so doing razor checking, depending on the kind of guitar that it is, say that it's something flatter, like, uh, you know, like a, a Strat or like a, a Firebird type guitar, uh, that's probably four hours 
with a razor blade. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's blade. going blah, 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 out. He's yeah. got a stack of them as far as he <laughs> exactly. can see. Like, you know, he's like, uh, I mean, out. I'm sure somebody like him who is masterful at that stuff, uh, I'm sure he's way faster than that, but it, it still has but to be. But it was be, just so minimal. It has to be a, you know, at least just an so, hour, a couple hours. But that's why it was so minimal. He probably just did a little bit. It's like, all right, this one's cool. Yeah. You know, maybe they just said, oh, you got to age a thousand guitars. <laughs> right. And he's probably, all right, I'll have a couple of weeks and I'll spend, you know, 15 minutes on oh, each one and I could get God. through it. You know, that's why we'd open them up and be like, it's barely aged. That, that's but there was like a little the bit of the 11th aging. circle of hell. Is, right. is just is that right? right. Razor jacket yeah. forever. There's a thousand guitars right, <laughs> right. there. Like yeah. done. Yeah. Oh, 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 here's, your, here's what's yeah. ahead of you. Here's your four hundred dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Go back to the mines or whatever. God. Like, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then you know, like the biggest thing I th thought that would be the thing because when we first started seeing really, really amazing stuff was Dave Johnson. I remember being at like a 30 Street Guitars and someone popped up that website and we were like, God, <laughs> like, oh my God. Like his gold tops looked like real gold tops. Yeah, and yeah. His Brock burst was just the shit. Yeah. And you know, this was still a long time. This has got to be 12 years ago still, you know, like, so, and we were just like amazed. Do you know much film. about his history? I, I don't. <gasps> no, you know, my friend Chris is really good friends with him and supposedly he's very cool. I don't really know where he comes from. I know historic makeovers was originally him and the fella Kim or Kip. I always, I always get them mixed up. It's yeah, there's one of them's Kim LaFleur and Kip Elder. Right. And one of them's okay. a refinishing guy, and one of them owns historic makeovers. Right. And I'm sorry for if I confused your <laughs> names because one of them we're going to be the, hearing the from the fellow a lot who, of lawyers. I know the, one, the fellow who owns historic makeovers back then used to come to 30th Street when I worked. Okay, there. he came to New York. He was super cool, and I remember asking him. I said, "Oh, I have a guitar. I would love to have Dave do the top on because my friend Les had retopped the '68 for me, and he shot it, and he wasn't that good at. I mean, I, I love Les, I should say, but his colors weren't terribly accurate. Okay. You know, he just shot this, like, that kind of orangey kind of finish. Yeah. And I really loved that Brock burst that Dave Johnson was shooting. So yeah, yeah. I asked him, Kim, yeah, it's not Kip. Kip Elder is the roof finishing guy. I, I think I'm that's right. I'm super sorry, fellas, if, <laughs> if we got your names wrong. Uh, but he, he was just, you know, and he said, sure, you know, I'll have Dave do it. And Dave, I think, was in Oregon or something. And uh, Yeah, I thought he was in the Northwest. And I think he still is. Because, you know, my friend Chris has him do stuff. And, right. But uh, I know that, and he did a beautiful job. It took longer than it was supposed to, of course. I think that was part of the problem <laughs> is that he got super backed up. Yeah. But yeah. he did an incredible job. I still have the guitar, you know, like, and Historic Makeovers was basically those that fella doing for Dave what I do for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it was just one guy. <laughs> or just a smaller <laughs> right. version of that. Or just really? an earlier version. Yeah. Just doing it way before. Yeah, fair enough. I guess you know, So it's not like right. I had the idea for this. They had the idea for this and maybe they got it from someone else. Yeah. You know, but, you know, but, you know, obviously a guy who was good at business and doing, blah, 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 a guy who was really good at doing this and got together and made that company. Now Historic Makeovers ha has a bunch of guys. Yeah, it looks like maybe a team of four yeah, or five dudes, Yeah, it's a dudes, team of I dudes guess. and they do beautiful work. You know, like, you know, they're, I guess you would call them our competition, although we don't compete in any way because, you know, like. Yeah, the market's big enough. Their that, stuff is yeah. great. Everyone's. Yeah, who's, uh, and, yeah everybody, everybody wins me, so, here. Yeah. yeah, people call me and be like, well, how does your stuff compare to Historic Makeovers? I'd be like, well, I think their stuff is really great. And I think <laughs> our stuff is really great, you know. We're better dancers, so <laughs> right. you know, that's true. They, you know. they can't. I, 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 I hopefully imagine I, if you find out, like, oh no, actually, they're professional <laughs> right. tango it's dancers. Like, Damn it! Yeah, that's always like ah. my, my joke line on the phone. No one gets us. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, they're really good. We're good, but we're better dancers. <laughs> right. And people go, what? I'm like, right. it's a joke. Yeah. Oh, okay, they're, they're award-winning ballroom dancers. Yeah. Do you ah. realize that they teach samba dancing? <laughs> Son of like, a fuck! I can't even tell a joke right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's you know their stuff is great. You know yeah. every time I see it, it's great. You know I just know it's not Dave Johnson anymore because then he had Dave Johnson restorations on his own, right? And did all kinds of stuff doing the same work. And he was doing a lot of work through Mark's Guitar Mark's Guitar Loft. Loft. Yeah, and he's a really nice guy. Yeah, I've never actually him. spoken to. I used stuff. to speak to him all the time because when I was at Thirty Street and we were just dealing with a million historics, and it's when they were changing the historics constantly. They're changing the custom shop. So you didn't, you didn't know if it was custom shop or historic or both, and which issue of it it was. Oh, it was, it's just a million fucking things coming out every couple months, and you, <laughs> so guitars were coming all day. If you get a buy, and you didn't know which one it was. Wait, were they all still designated like R eight, R nine? No, because some were. It was literally somewhere historic and somewhere custom shop, and they weren't the same. <laughs> so it was so confusing. But I would call the fellow Mark, and he knew them all. He'd be like, wow. "What's your serial number?" It's a this. Man. It's worth this. He really knows Thank his you. stuff. He, and he, that's his business, is yeah. reissue less false. Yeah, fair but enough. man, he knew his shit. 
and I thought I knew my shit. I was <laughs> He's like, I you like, don't. And by the way, I'm a better dancer. Fucking thing. <laughs> right. And I don't have a dance. But, but he just knew that stuff, and he was a super guy. Yeah. You know, like I haven't spoke to him in a long time, but I know his, I go on his website all the time, and I see Dave Johnson stuff. And well, he, did you ever talk with Dave Johnson? Did you ever? I don't think I him? ever talked to him because I did it all through Kim or Kip. You know, uh, like, okay, I see. All right, he was he was kind of your your point. Oh uh, yeah, I just dealt with him, and he would come into Thursday Street because he so, sort of knew him. You know, because oh, he was, oh, he, he would he was in New York a lot. Yeah, so oh, I knew him. I was thinking he was in Florida. He lived in Florida, but for some reason he was in New York fairly often. Oh. And he loved coming to 30th Street. Okay. So, you know, so I would see him from time to time. That's what all, all, all happened. He walked in. I was like, oh, you know, I'd love to have a guitar done. He's like, great. You know, yeah. just ship it out. You know, I'll take care of it. No problems. You know, and, you know, it just took a long time, but did a beautiful job. Yes. You know, like, you know, and. And we were such a fan of, and you know, he just did that Brock verse, which we're, you know, you're doing the Brock verse for me right now. Like, That's right. We're really going to try to, you know, really for a long time, Dave Johnson was just the, the bar for this. You know, Absolutely. Dave's gold top was just the shit. I mean, any of the stuff I, it, it's funny. One, one of the things that's so peculiar about just boutique guitars in general is that the circulation for this stuff is so small, the numbers right. are so small, that you almost never see any of it in person. Right. That's, that's one of the things that's so cool about Mountain Cat guitars is that, Oh my God! It's one of those I've read about them for years. Right, and there's seen a red rocket guitar there's right next to an Isaac Berman guitar right yeah, next. It's to, right. like three well, unicorns, right? Right. In a row, right. Well, know? that was the idea of it. You know, like especially once I got into the boutique thing, was saying like, you know, I don't want it to be a store because I worked in stores for so long and I don't want to do the store thing. Plus, boutique guitars I don't think work in stores anyway. Probably. Yeah, People yeah. People walk in and go, "Why are these the expensive? Right. They're yeah. not Gibsons." Yeah, they're, you know, like, that one looks the same yeah. as that one. Yeah, you know, like that. So they never really work. You know, even you know at guitar shops and see, I would consign some of that stuff, but no. No one knew what it was. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Because I was just in the vintage guitar world. The boutique thing, even when I entered it, was so primitive. You know, like there was only a couple dealers. There was no real kind of communication between anybody. A lot of the the builders who now are very prominent builders, this was nine years ago. Right. So we were all yeah, young. It's a very different. You know, Doug world. Howard, how old could he even be? I think he was in his twenties. I think that's right. You know, yeah. we used to marvel how young he was. I, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I knew him for a few months before I find, found out how young he really was. <laughs> right. I thought he was like, he you know, maybe mid thirties. Right? He was like in his mid twenties. <laughs> yes. He's making guitars. Yeah. You know, like he's a mover and a shaker. Isn't yeah, he? and he always was. You know, yeah. right from the beginning. You know, like, you know, like, and then you know, it all sort of grew. Well, then the Banshee thing started with Doug. You know, yeah. so we started doing Banshee. I was the exclusive Banshee guy. Mm -hmm. So we just started banging out, and they started selling like mad. Yeah. So we were off to the races. You know, yeah. like, you know, all of a sudden we're selling Banshees. You know, yeah, like. I, but there again, I mean, that's that's one of those things where uh, unless you have something like your shop, which there are very few of, you're just never going to see uh, this right. or uh, that. And there's so much cool shit. So your job is almost like, you know, like, check this out. You right. know, like, because most guys, especially in, unless you're really into this and you, you know, go on all the same websites we go to yes. and all that, you don't even know that some of this stuff is being built. And there's so many builders out there that I don't rep that I would if I could. You know, like, you know, I can only rep a certain amount of builders, I think. You know, I don't want redundancies. I don't need ten telly guys. Right. You, you don't want redundancies. But there are ten telly guys I'd carry. And, and you don't want to be so <laughs> diffuse. And it's not uh, fair to the telly guys. So I remember yeah. when I took your guitars on and I had Shiho Han's guitars. And I was like, all right, that's it for tellies. Yeah. You know, like two guys is fine. And then I meet Jeff from Champ Tone. Right. I'm like, fuck, that was a stupid rule. Why <laughs> did I make that fucking rule? Damn it. And then you meet the next great telly guy. And you're like, fuck, these yeah. are nice guitars. That's why me and Jeff came up with... Let's do a guitar together. It's not a telly, and that's where the Grand Electric came from. Yeah. So, like, because his guitar oh, is that were what so... he's calling it now? The Grand Electric? Yeah. That's great. I that like that. I think it's incredible. Grand you know? Electric. But it was really because oh, I couldn't lovely. carry his telly. And he came to my shop one day with them, and I was like, fuck, these are so nice. <laughs> and I literally just promised you I wouldn't take on any more tellies. I'm like, <laughs> this guy rolls in with these tellies. I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> I'll you're take them. You're fucking killing me. Please. But I said, no. You know, like, I'm out of my word. I, did, I said, you know, we got to find something else. You know, yeah. like, and then I, we had this idea. I always forget exactly how it came up, but I was like, let's work on a guitar together. It was the same way with Red Rocket. Right. Uh, I didn't do his tellies initially. Right. And the, but he had other things. I, exactly. You know, and right. now he I has, won't take this, but I'll take this other right. thing you do. And his tellies are really cool. I actually have one of his tellies coming in, but that's a flamey thing and nothing like what well, sure, sure. you or Chiho yeah. does. You know, so like, you know, but there's even other telly. There's so many good telly guys, you know, but how many tellies you need to choose and then let another dealer sell. Yeah. You know, I just got my first Scott Lentz guitar yesterday. Someone consigned it with me. And he was always the guy I always heard. Like, it's Chiho or Scott Lentz. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, a couple of the guys at that top level. And boy, it's a nice guitar. Yeah, I have I have spent no time with it in my hands, but just saw it at your shop earlier today. 
neat, neat piece. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's just so many of these guys doing incredible yeah. work. I mean, this this is the golden age of uh, I would say that this is the olden, for sure, because there's still Fenders, there's still Gibsons. Right. But there's things like you're building, like, you know, like incredibly high quality things that are hand built. The, there know? are people who devote themselves solely to reproducing the best version of fill in the blank guitar. Right. Or the knobs. Like this existed. Matt Haramis. <laughs> right, like, not even guitars. Doing just, shit with I'm knobs. The best They're knobs. Un believable. Yes, yeah. And like I met him. It was a weird thing is I met him outside the guitar business. My wife knew a girlfriend of his at the time. Oh, is that right? That's yeah, funny. and somehow, you know, I was like, yeah, I'll talk to him or whatever. And it and he was just started. He had some knobs, but now he's blown up. Yeah. You know, he's everywhere. Yeah. And he's a really cool guy. It's but like, super cool dude. But just doing amazing things with a knob. You know, like, right, right. You know, so this really is the golden era of stuff because you can get the coolest fucking knobs in the world. You know, you know, like the best of any single thing, component or just, the uh, the whole gestalt. And it's still getting better. Right. You know, there's still like you know things. So what we do to Les Pauls and and refinishing and all that is just part of all that. Yeah. You know, like because you can't make your own Les Paul, you can make a similar guitar. Right. But if you make something that looks just like this, you'll be sued. So <laughs> right. you know, one way to get something that really looks like an old Les Paul because Unless you can afford a little less ball, and it's a very small <laughs> right, percentage me, of the population. A, a third right, but you can get a new one or one that you have around that you kind of like, but we're never thrilled with the color, or never quite thrilled with the neck carve, or yeah, yeah. or just something about it just didn't look like Jimmy Page's guitar, or you know, like now you can take that guitar and turn it into something that Absolutely. has a real lacquer. Yeah, and the lacquer is the thing, you know, like that's why the Beatles were stripping their guitars, and that's why everyone was stripping their stuff, is they knew as the late '60s came around. And the Fender was, and Gibson were no longer using nitro lacquer. Yeah, they were using something else, and they 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 said it in interviews. They're like, "You got to strip that shit off of there." Well, I mean, it's just it, there's an interesting feel, there's an interesting texture to this kind of stuff. Right, it nitro is in very an unpredictable. Way. It does weird shit, and the more you play it, the cooler it looks. Or if you happen to get one from some guy who was a heavy smoker, yeah, it's really yeah. fucking cool. He's probably dead, but you know, <laughs> but he made your guitar look fucking cool. You know, like you know, but God bless him. You know, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> For sacrifice. Himself Shout so my guitar can look cool. <laughs> Shout out, yeah. cigarette man. Good for you, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I was one of those guys, you know. Again, I, when, even when I used to smoke, I used to put the ashes on the guitar and rub it in. <laughs> and when I quit smoking, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? But, but that's how we used to age them. We used to make a little ding and put cigarette right, ashes right. in. Right, right. Just it. ash right in there. Yeah, that's you know, funny. it worked good, you know. But, you know, like, but you could do. You know, when you strip these things, I mean, you strip them. I don't strip them. But <laughs> <laughs> when we strip them. You're welcome to strip them by, if you want. Yeah, by we stripping my. <laughs> Right. You strip them. Yes. Yeah, I'm not, you, you'll know the difference because <laughs> you were there. A lot of crazy shit comes off of them. Yes. Yeah. The it, stuff that is not lacquer. It's plastic, right? It is a weird sort of plasticky, rubbery thing. I mean, that's what people say. They could like they could peel it off. In in some cases, yeah, yeah. I mean, so th there tends to be three ways that you can strip a guitar. One is just sanding it right. uh, with with sandpaper. The the pro is that you can control the degree to which you're removing paint. Right. But the well, that was the thing in the that olden you're producing days. toxic dust. You know, right. The old days, you you get fenders that were refinished, but you could see that they'd sanded and fucked the contours of the guitars <laughs> right. up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, why does that guitar look so fucked up? Yeah. And that's then, oh, because. They messed with the contours because they didn't realize they were sanding too hard. Right. They they were just way too aggressive. Yeah. So sometimes you're just like something looks really odd about yeah. that. And you're like, oh, because this is now not the same. They've actually, <laughs> yes. and it makes the whole guitar look different. Oh, in in a weird, in a really usually uncomfortable. Totally. Kind of way. Yeah, it never looks better. No. <laughs> it's never like, well, they really improved this one. Oh yeah. yeah. So you can heat uh, the finish up and then kind of scrape. Uh, but the, the pro is there that it's pretty quick. It's usually right. like less toxic insofar as you're not producing dust. I mean, you want to like wear a mask when you're doing that. Uh, but then the, the, the con is that you can potentially gouge your wood. Right. Uh, and say if you're doing it with something as uh, nice as like a flame maple top, uh, that is not a place where you want to have a gouge. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and you're creating work for yourself having, having to repair the thing. Third way is that you use chemicals to strip a finish. And that is the way that you really reveal the extent to which uh, the paint is some kind of plasticky, rubbery thing, right. uh, and you just make this goopy, soupy mess. It's gross. <laughs> uh, you have to dispose of it somewhere. 
Uh, and then you have to clean up, you know, the the thing after that. Right. So, so this is what you folks are paying for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, you're you're paying for for you my have to edit. clean up mm, fucking <laughs> yes. filthy to toxic soup. <laughs> Super fun site. Is I don't even want to know where you throw that shit away. Oh man, let's it's, not say. It's gross. <laughs> let's not say. <laughs> Just because someone gross. lives near there. <laughs> Stripping is is a pain. I mean, well, that was always the thing. Like, like I'll fit. You know, like they used to say, like I'll paint your guitar, but you strip it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to get zip strip like night bobs and talk. About it on his like thing where he got a custom color shower as a kid, and yeah, like, yeah. he wanted it to look like Jerry Garcia, so he gets a zip strip. Yep. And I'd done that to a guitar. Like, I guess zip strips is really is a thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's super crazy toxic. So yeah. everyone would be doing it in their basement, you know, being like, "Oh, this looks awesome. <laughs> Why are there giraffes on it suddenly? Like, <laughs> right. Oh, that's right, because I'm sucking in <laughs> oh, death right. fumes. Right. Yeah. Because the tumor is like, pushing yeah. on my uh, hippocampus. Are those giraffes. This is awesome. <laughs> You know, like, so I'd be like, go outside and do right. that. You are dying. Uh, okay. <laughs> but wait a second. This feels so good. You have 10 minutes to live. <laughs> yeah, it's like that kind of thing. So, like, but, yeah, that was probably half the battle because you see so many old refins and they've, you know, like, they fucked the contours of a telly up. It was so easy to fuck yeah. a telly up. Yeah. Because they have these beautiful lines. Right. And now they're not so beautiful no. anymore. No, they're all fucked just up. Just a mess. Yeah, so, like, but that, you know, I guess also has a, a large... Thing. But also the type of nitro that we use, yeah, is not the type of nitro Very a lot of other stuff. people use. Yeah. You know, like because there's nitro and there's nitro. Yes, for sure. You know, so like what Gibson say calls nitro, or what a lot of people call nitro, won't weather check like this. We have discovered in that, trying to weather check. It. <laughs> yes, that is for sure. So, and you know, to get down to, to so when you weather check a guitar, because people are gonna want to know this. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, and they're probably like. Halfway through the podcast, going like, why isn't they fucking told me how to? You told me <laughs> I haven't learned yeah, anything. Yeah. Damn it! How do you fucking weather check it? <laughs> Just fucking tell me so I can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. um, I got a meeting to go so to. So it's with, you, but you know the way we you do this. Obviously, you shoot this very thin, which is a big part because that looks like a real old Les Paul. Because that yeah. was not thick lacquer. Because they knew if they put thick lacquer on it, wouldn't sound right. Yeah, I mean that's part of it. And then you also have to imagine that this is a company that's producing a lot of instruments. Uh, they're trying to keep their costs down, so spraying a lot of paint means that you're... And Fender, too. Like this, costs a lot. Fender, the 70s you know, finishes were so thick. Yes. And that's why they, they was actually advertised them. The thick skin was a thing that they used to Well, they to also said, like, once the Les Pauls got that heavy, they started saying, oh, it adds sustain. <laughs> right. It put yes. brass parts on it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that was, like, a thing, the heavier ones. And maybe it's true. I mean, heavy Les Paul can sound good. But you can't stand up with it for that no, long. No, come you know, So, like, oh. you know, like, it's you have 13 anchor. pound less balls. Yeah, you need a little stand with a wheel on it that you can. Yeah, they were just too heavy. But yeah. I remember I bought one as a kid. It was super fucking heavy. But I was a kid. Yeah. So I could stand up with that. But at this age, it would, <laughs> you just could never, you know, like, oh. it would just cause this problem, you know. Well, like, so, so checking. Uh, so checking is basically uh, wood and paint expanding and contracting at different rates. Right. And so the newer paint that uh, companies use has what's called plasticizers in it. If they're using lacquer, uh, and I, I think this might also apply uh, to polyurethane as well, but I'm not totally sure, but definitely for lacquer, uh, they will have uh, added these things which right. allow the paint to stretch, essentially. That it's uh, almost like putting spandex over right. over. because they don't want it with the check. Exactly. So, yeah, so that's the thing there, because that's why Leo Fender and all this moved away from shooting nitro and shooting it so thin right. is because two or three years later checking, and all the shit we apart. won on those maple fretboards, right. people were coming in going, what the fuck? Right, this looks like garbage. I had this two years and he would put a new neck on and be like, this sucks. Shoot that shit thicker. Right. You know, like, yeah, he, exactly. he knew it wasn't the right move, but he couldn't be replacing necks every two years. All the stuff that we love about the vintage patina right. they on were the guitar trying to prevent is stuff that from they're happening. pulling their hair out Right, about. and that's yeah. why they went to poly and that's why they got away from nickel parts even. Yeah, it, it also requires... Well, we tried to you age the nickel parts like this, but they were trying to get him not to age, so they went to chrome. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's so funny how we're trying to reproduce all the things that happened right. naturally that Mistakes. they didn't want to happen. <laughs> well, they, well, they knew, they just, well, your guitar's getting old. Well, yeah, but it shouldn't do this. It's yeah. bullshit. Yeah, you know, exactly. there's no warranty on this fucking thing. Yeah. And they'd have to give the guy new pickups. You know, meanwhile, now he's throwing away PAS. <laughs> you know, but, you, but no one knew any of that yeah. shit. They're I'll just like, take that trash out for Right, that's why they went out to chrome parts. Yeah. You know, and different lacquer, you know, like, because... Especially as the companies were getting bigger and bigger. Yes, you know, like for they, sure. They, well, I, I mean, so you're also bringing into uh, into the picture the uh, skill of the operator applying paint. That right. uh, it's just easier uh, to apply a Shoot thicker big, thick couple thing, right. coats of paint as opposed to thinner 
multiple coats of paint and the, the fussiness that, that goes into uh, dealing yeah, and, with a lack of finish. And some things, like what we're discovering now, which is really interesting, as we've been doing it for a long time, is weather checking is unpredictable. Yes, yeah, So, because yeah. we, we just had it with a guitar that was very much like all the other guitars we do, and the weather, and we the, all the other variables seem the same, but the weather checks are going in what we consider to be the wrong direction. <laughs> right, running running, running parallel this way, with where, the axis of the neck. And you know, normally on these guitars you see it going this way, and all of a sudden this, and how many times did you strip that guitar? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> I've never had this happen, so this is actually the first time that, that I've ever had to do this. Usually it's one and done. Yeah. Uh, four yeah. times is right. how I, how many times I had to do this. But so, just to, to kind of fill this picture out a little bit further, so imagine imagine the wood of the guitar kind of expanding and contracting like a, uh, an accordion. Uh, with the kind of paint that we were just talking about, with the, the sort of uh, stretchy uh, paint as the wood expands and contracts the paint will also you know match that right. makes sense with the kind of lacquer that we use which has zero plasticizers the stuff is brittle and it's like Correct. what was used in the past in the right. 50s and the 60s when the the wood expands and contracts it fractures it right. breaks breaks the finish. that is exactly the finish itself breaks, breaks. and that's what finish and that's checking what, is when we were kids they called it weather checking yeah. They knew that weather produced it. Yeah. It wasn't a mystery of what produced it. Because right. guys, you'd hear, like, we're in Colorado in a snowstorm. Get right. to the let, gig. Let your case... Take the guitar out, go into a hot stage. And I had a friend who said he could watch it happen. <laughs> like, he was like, <laughs> took the guitar out of the case and watched it happening. He was yes. like, oh my God. It's like a little earthquake. Yeah, he's on a hot stage, opens it up. They've been in a van for three days. And he said he literally watched it weather check. You know, mm. he was like, my guitar is imploding. <laughs> you know, like, and but you know, we knew what weather checking. We go. It was always called weather checking, as yeah. far as I remember. So people knew. And so the way you produce weather checking is with weather. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, I just control the temperature of the guitar. Right. I mean, so once I am done with a finish, uh, and and the way that I approach a finish is that I try and make it look as showroom new as I can. Uh, from from the get go, which right. which might sound weird, I think pe most no, people I've, who are I've, familiar with me might think, wait, what? You're gonna yeah, no, it seems up. so counterintuitive because I remember we used to have someone else, you know, shoot the guitars and then I'd have you age them. The guy'd be like, so I have to shoot a perfect finish so that guy can go <laughs> fuck it up, like, yeah, so we can ruin it. Yeah, like this is <laughs> a stupid job. But it's almost like people go, oh, it's like having ripped jeans, you know, buying ripped jeans. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. No, it's not. Well, you know, so buying ripped jeans. Start with a new finish. It's different. Uh, <laughs> basically. The, the, the way that uh, I think you and I both think about it is that we're just trying to do as much of what happens naturally as possible right. to the guitar, uh, to, to get it to the, the to point that like it this might have been, guitar, right? you know, exactly, you know, within a 50 year right. span. We're just condensing that into a two month period of time, right. or not even in some cases. Right. Uh, and so once the finish is done, you know, it's this shiny mirror finish, uh, beautiful thing, then uh, control the temperature of the environment uh, and induce checking uh, in the thing. Then uh, start and that's with done things with a freezer. and scratch. Mm -hmm. Done with the yeah. sub-zero freezer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and it goes into the freezer for now. You probably have that pretty dialed in. You know how long it's supposed to sit yeah, in the freezer. Exactly. When you should take it out. Sometimes it has to go back in. Mm -hmm. All that shit because we've been through that a million times. Like, mm -hmm. nope, it needs another round. Mm -hmm. You know, and you got some guy waiting, calling. Is my guitar almost done? <laughs> right. or, you know, like which we don't do much of. But also the thing about Protocaster makeovers that we'd like people to know, if you don't know, is if we shoot your guitar and it's not exactly what you like, we'll just strip it and do it fucking again. Do and it we'll again. Keep doing it again until you're happy. And that has happened. You know, like a gold top can be. It could be, there's a lot of different gold top golds. And they could send you a picture of a gold top gold, but it could look different on your screen. And it could right, look different so, on your screen or the angle of the thing. Right. And also, what comes out of your gun, from what I gather, you intend to shoot this, but it can be slightly lighter or darker. So, mm. if the person really has a certain color involved and they're not seeing it in person, you were sending them pictures of it. But uh, we even, that hasn't happened too many times where the color wasn't. Well, you shot a color that wasn't the color. You knew it wasn't the color and never sent the pictures. Or remember the one fellow we, we had well, one. I've shot colors for, for my own kind of stuff where right. I'd intended to do one thing and was playing around with mixing the color and came out weird and I'm like, eh, that's fine. Right. That's not what I was intending, but it's fine. Right. Uh, yeah, we had a few of those. But yeah. you know, when, when the customer's involved, I remember there was one like we didn't even send the, you were like, I'm just stripping it. 
I think it was a gold top or something. I don't remember which one, but you were like, you were like, were like nah, I'm not even sending him the pictures because I'm I've already stripped it. Yeah, I'm not. I, it just wasn't what I liked. It was gold top, I think. What was it? I think so. Because you were just like, you know, I'm just not happy with the gold. Yeah. You know, so you know, so if you send us a guitar and you're in any way not happy, you know, we send constant pictures. Yeah. You don't have to wait for pictures from us. You know, before you ask for them, you'll get them. Because every time Josh says, oh, I did this last night. He'll go, oh, the pictures are in your email, and I send them to the customer. Mm -hmm. So we've probably sent too many pictures. And some people aren't <laughs> right. used to seeing guitars in the condition we're sending them. Yes, like, when that's, you that's first send that picture part. of, yeah, it's, it's gotten us in trouble a few times, and a lot of people like don't do that. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. But a lot of people get freaked out when you send that first picture of their guitar stripped. <laughs> yes. yeah, I mean, they're like, oh, well, that looks terrible. I mean, yeah. I guess to be fair. Or was the one guy going, like, there's not much weather checking on it. We're like, dude, we haven't even buffed <laughs> it out yet. There's yeah. no paint on yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't even shot the clear code yet. Yeah. You know, but but people don't know that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Most people are not used to seeing the finish go on, so it's not certainly not their fault. I mean, imagine and, a surgeon sending you a photo of like, well, just complete the quadruple bypass. Yeah. Here it is. I haven't like, sewed you up yet, I though, so the, <laughs> the blood's gushing all over the room. But it's going to be <laughs> pretty good. good. I, right. I don't I'm know used what I'm looking at. <laughs> right, and that's why like, a lot of people are like, you're crazy for sending those pictures. Yeah. Like, you should, you're opening yourself up to such grief. And I'm like, but you know what? It's probably so much fun to watch for somebody to say, oh, wow, look at my guitar strip. Look, And then you have all these pictures I, I, at I the end, you, and you go, wow. And then you can look through them and go, oh, I remember when I got that picture. I was so fucking psyched. You know, I, no, I'm the same way. I'm not even saying, like, customers are like this. I'm like this. It, well, well, when you send me pictures of my in. guitar, I get excited. I, I mean, you, you know? you're the guide rails for those people. Right. Uh, where, where they might be like, oh, my God, what's happening? <gasps> uh, that's where, right. where your, your affability uh, comes to, to, to bear where they're, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I, we're going to be I, okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're going to yeah. get through this thing. Yeah. But yeah, that's why it's so much fun when you do a makeover for someone. They're your friend now for eight weeks on the phone or 12 weeks or however long it takes. You're talking to them constantly. Yeah. You know, like you know, like Jamie or the, our fellow we're, we're doing a Gold Top for now. I love that guy. <laughs> you know, yes, and yeah. it's like a bummer at the end when like the guitar's done. And you're like, so we're not going to so, talk tomorrow. So then it happened with some guy. I remember like, oh, we're we going to still keep in touch, right? Yeah, one guy <laughs> was building my guitar. It took over a year. You know, like wow. Damien Probert was building it. He had to move his shop. He had a bunch oh, of that's right. bunch of yeah. things that went on. So like, and I'm talking to this guy constantly. And then like the guitar's like now just about done. And I'm yeah. like, so we're going to keep in touch, right? Like. <laughs> You know, you're just cool. You know, you become friend. You're going through a thing together. Yeah. You know, like, and then it comes out, and they're really happy with it. And you get that email, and there's nothing more rewarding than that for me. It's like when you sell somebody a guitar, and they get that email, like, I "Love my guitar. I'm so fucking into it." That still just makes me so happy. It, it, it Even is. Even though I've been really doing this rewarding. a long time, I'm not one of those jaded guys. Like, fuck it, I don't want. <laughs> right. I want money. Seen it, yeah. done it. Yeah, just give me my money. I don't give <laughs> right. a fuck. You know, it's like that's just not me. You know, like I. Because I still am the customer. Like, even though I've been a dealer, I That's never, a like, great like way I am a guitar it. dealer and you're less of a person because uh, you buy a guitar from right. me. You know, like, and there are guys like that. You, you are know? a peon. Yeah, I control the guitar universe. <laughs> you live in my universe or some shit. You know, like, it's to me, I'm still the customer. Like, when yeah. you do a guitar for me, when I get the picture, I'm just as excited as the customers yeah. are. Like, yeah. so I haven't lost the, my love for guitars and my passion for those funny little I, moments. I, I think it hasn't really diminished comes in any way. I think it's very, it might be very worse clear. now. You know? <laughs> Because I fucking love guitars. I hope you enjoyed part one of our talk with Josh Grove from Protocaster Guitars. And please tune in next week for part two and the continuation of our talk with Josh. Thank you.